Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm starting the first in a new series that I'm going to be doing. If you didn't know this, I am obsessed with unsolved mysteries, psychological mysteries, murder mysteries, just mysteries in general. So the main YouTube channels that I tend to watch are like Buzzfeed Unsolved, Bella Fiore, um, Caitlin Rose, Danielle Hallen, they're all people that cover like unsolved mysteries and things like that so I thought why not give it a go and start my own mini mystery series thing where I'll be talking about unsolved mysteries and like psychological mysteries. Also, if you do like this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. It would mean so much to me to have you here on my channel with me and to keep watching this series as I create it. So the first case that I'm going to be covering is the case of Olaf Palmer. Olaf Palmer was the leader of the Swedish Social Democratic Party and he was actually the Prime Minister of Sweden. So on the 28th of February 1986, Olaf Palmer and his wife Lisbeth went to the cinema. Olaf, despite being the Prime Minister, often wanted to lead as normal life as he possibly could, so often went out without bodyguards and unfortunately on the night of his assassination he had decided that was one of those nights where he didn't want any bodyguards. So the decision to actually go to the cinema was a very late notice one. His wife had decided that she wanted to go and see this film and then she had rung up their son to discuss this film to see whether it was good and worth watching and when her husband Olaf got home she informed him about her plans of wanting to go to the cinema. He didn't hear about these plans until 18.30, so that's 6.30pm, and still was a bit unsure, so he rang up his son to discuss the plans as well. After talking with his son Martin on the phone, Olaf decided that he would join his son Martin, Martin's girlfriend and his wife to go and see this comedy, and they would meet outside the Grand Cinema at 9pm, meaning they left their apartment or their house at 8.30pm. Now, the film was very popular and it was almost sold out and his son and his son's girlfriend had already purchased their tickets, however, Olaf and his wife hadn't. However, the ticket clerk recognised that it was the Prime Minister and decided to give him the tickets for the best seats that he could get. So after they watched the film, Olaf and Lisbeth and Martin and his girlfriend stayed outside the cinema until about quarter past 11 at night. Olaf and Lisbeth headed south on the west side of Svivagen, I think that's how you pronounce it. Then, when they got to Adolf Friedrich Church, they crossed over the road towards the metro. Then, at 23.21, as they were crossing the street, only a few metres into the street, a man appeared behind Olaf and shot him once at close range in the back, and a second shot was also fired, which injured Lisbeth. The perpetrator then jogged down the street until he got to David Bagara's garter, where he was last seen. Two minutes after the couple were shot, a taxi driver notices them and phones the police straight away whilst two girls from the street rush to help the couple. At 23.24, the first patrol car arrived on the scene and by 23.25, an ambulance was there giving assistance to the victims. However, at six minutes past midnight, Olaf Palm was pronounced dead due to a fatal gunshot wound. There wasn't much forensic evidence left at the scene. The only forensic evidence was the two bullets that were fired and because of the weapon used to fire them, it meant there were no shell casings. It was just the bullets they had to go off. However, they did identify that the bullets were Winchester Magnum .357 bullets. The bullets lacked certain like character defamations that you often see when bullets are fired so this led the police to think that the weapon was a large handgun that would have been carried quite discreetly. Throughout the investigation the Swedish police tested over 500 Magnum revolvers 
which is absolutely crazy. They, they were committed to finding whoever did this. Obviously, the Prime Minister had just been shot and killed by an unknown assassin, so they had to get everything right on this case. Due to this, the police placed massive emphasis on trying to find stolen Magnum revolvers, and they actually found all of the ones they were looking for apart from one. The one they couldn't find was that of Arnie Sh Suckstorf, Arn Arn Suckstorf, I think that's how you pronounced it, and it was stolen in 1977, and he was actually a filmmaker. The person who actually admitted to stealing this weapon also admitted on his deathbed to lending it to a man named Krista Pettersson, who I will get to later. So this is a very interesting claim. Another weapon that the police focused prominently on was called a Mockfjord gun. I don't know how to pronounce that, I'm really sorry. It was a revolver type of Smith & Wesson Model 28, or a highway patrolman revolver. This specific gun that they were looking for was believed to have been stolen in a burglary. The gun was then later used in a robbery in 1983 and when they did isotope analysis on the bullets from this robbery it matched the isotope analysis of those done on Palmer's assassination. However, in 2006 scientists claimed that this only meant that the bullet composition was made at the same time so the two bullets used were made at the same time but not necessarily fired from the same weapon. However, later in 2006, a law enforcement actually found this specific gun that they'd been looking for at the bottom of a lake. It was confirmed as the same gun used in the robbery that where the isotope analysis of the bullets had matched Palmer's assassination. They confirmed this by the serial number that was found on the weapon. However, in 2007, despite many tests, they decided they couldn't actually confirm it was the weapon used in the Palmer assassination because it was so rusted that when they test fired the bullets, they couldn't create the same striation marks because of the rust inside of the weapon. So the bullets were the only forensic evidence found at the scene however there were more than 25 witnesses who came forward to the police obviously this happened in a very public space and also Lisbeth um, Palmer's wife was one of the key witnesses. All the witnesses have described the killer as a man between 30 and 50 years of age. Many witnesses reported that the killer walked with a limp or clumsily. However, no good description of the killer's appearance exists, especially as he shot both Lisbeth and Olaf from behind. So that is all the facts of the case, which leads me on to the theories. There are so many theories in this case, it's actually crazy. So I'm going to start with Krista Pettersson, who was the name I mentioned earlier. Krista Pettersson was a drug addict, an alcoholic and a criminal who had previously been imprisoned for manslaughter. And in December 1988, almost three years after the assassination of Palmer, he was arrested for the murder of Olaf Palmer. Now, Krista Pettersson was actually picked out of a lineup by Lisbeth Palmer, Olaf's wife, who was there at the time. And this was one of the main reasons that he was arrested. He was then tried and convicted of the murder of Olaf. However, he later had an appeal and he was acquitted of anything to do with the murder. So he was acquitted for three main reasons. The main one being that the police really messed up the lineup where Lisbeth picked out Krista. There was speculation that Lisbeth had seen Krista before going into the lineup and that the police were heavily hinting to her which one to pick out of the lineup, which obviously makes it unfair. There was also speculation about Lisbeth's reliability as a witness as she was shot from behind and she would have been in such a traumatic state that it is very doubtful whether she would have actually got a good look at the killer. 
They also didn't have any forensic evidence to tie Krista to the murder. They couldn't find the weapon in his house. There was nothing at all to link him to this except for Lisbeth picking him out of this lineup. He also didn't appear to have a clear motive to kill the Prime Minister of his country. However, later on, after he'd already been acquitted, lots of bits of evidence have added up against Krista. So that includes the person who stole the weapon, then saying he lent it to Krista. So Krista Pettersson actually died in 2004, but in the late 90s, lots of evidence, evidence I guess, circumstantial evidence came about about why he may have been the killer of Olaf Palmer. So a lot of petty criminals actually claim that Krista went out to kill a drug dealer by the name of Sigvard Sedegren, who actually walked the same way as Lisbeth and Olaf were walking and that he killed the Prime Minister by mistake. Now moving on to another theory, this becomes more political. So the second theory is that South Africa had something to do with it. On the 21st of February 1986, a week before Olaf was murdered, he actually made a statement saying that the apartheid cannot be reformed, it has to be abolished. And if you don't already know, the apartheid system was something that was happening in South Africa. The apartheid was basically institutionalised racial racial segregation and discrimination that took place heavily in South Africa from the 40s right through until 1991. Olaf Palmer was heavily against the apartheid system and he believed in equality for all, which really annoyed some white South Africans. Ten years after Olaf's death, Colonel Eugene de Nock, who was a former South African police officer, he gave evidence to a Supreme Court saying that Olaf was killed because he was anti-apartheid. And Sweden actually made very big contributions to the ANC, who were like the apartheid national people. They were like the party for the apartheid. Dinoch then claimed he actually knew who was responsible for Olaf's death, and that person was Craig Williamson. Williamson was a former colleague of Dinox and he was a South African spy. Following Dinox's claims, the Swedish police investigation team actually visited South Africa, however they found nothing to substantiate Dinox's claims. So another theory is that there was a police conspiracy. This theory is that the assassination occurred as a group of heavily right-wing police officers came together to form a plan to assassinate the Prime Minister. In an article by Klaus Dieter Knapp, he claims that two witnesses actually came through identifying the killer as a police officer they had had previous encounters with. However, nothing was ever substantiated from these claims and nothing was done about it. Another theory is that the PKK had something to do with it. Now the PKK is Kurdistan Workers Party. So there were many, many rumors that the PKK had been involved in the assassination. And this actually led to the arrest of lots of Kurds that were living in Sweden. It actually got Hans Homer, the Swedish police commissioner, kicked off of the Palmer case because he had arrested these people with no substantiated evidence against them except for hearsay. The Turkish media, and right up until 2007, 2008, have always said that the PKK were involved in the assassination. However, the PKK have never admitted any involvement. There is no forensic evidence to tie it, them to it. It's literally just rumours. So a, another theory that people believe, however, is literally impossible, is that the laser man did it. And if you don't know who the laser man is, the laser man is John Ozonius. Ozonius? I think that's how you pronounce it. He is a convicted Swedish bank robber and murderer and attempted serial killer. And from August 1991 till January 1992, 
he actually shot 11 people, killing one and seriously injuring most of the others. He used a rifle that was equipped with laser sight or laser vision. I'm doing this a lot in this video. Laser sight or laser vision, hence giving him the name The Laser Man. However, he actually had a very strong alibi for the night as he was actually in prison on the night of Olaf Palmer's murder. It definitely could not have been him. However, many crime theorists like to think it was. So that's sort of the end of the theories. I don't know which one I believe. I think it could have been a government based thing. However, they only decided to go to the cinema last minute. So if it was a planned murder, how would they know where he was as they checked his whole house after the murder, they checked it for bugging, wiretapping, anything like that and they couldn't find anything. So I don't know what to believe. It could have been Krista Patterson, it could have been any of these people, it could have been a pro-apartheid people, it could have been someone within the Swedish government who didn't like him, however he was quite a popular prime minister. It's such a confusing case because there was such little evidence, literally just two bullets and then witnesses who aren't reliable and oh, it's just so crazy thinking that the prime minister was shot and killed and to this day they still don't know who did it and this isn't that long ago this is only in 1986 so it's not like it was the 20s or the 30s like we have great technology now we had good technology back then how do they not know who did it the fact that they don't know who did it and it is still unsolved and it is still an active case that makes me think that it might have been a political thing or a government based thing because I think if the prime minister was shot you'd get to the bottom of it like you you just would I don't know how you would but you you would and to think he was just out having a good time with his wife and his son and his son's girlfriend and it's so heartbreaking that they don't have any clarity still. And to think it can happen in such a public place with so many people around and yet no one saw anything of use, that's just crazy to me. Like, this is a case that needs to be solved for Swedish history's sake, if not anything else. So I hope you enjoyed this video guys and I hope you enjoy this series and if you do enjoy it don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, it would really help and thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoyed this case as much as I did and if you've got any other theories just comment them down below, I'd love to hear them. Yeah, give me your thoughts on this case because it's really confusing. Anyway, thank you for watching, stay wonderful.